Okay, so we are now live and we are being live streamed and I will invite my colleagues at John Jay to tell us a few words. Um, thank you, Yasmina. Um, my name is Holly Clark and I've been teaching at John Jay as an adjunct for more than 30 years and welcome to all of you to the PSC cross campus grade in against layoffs and course reduction. Um, today we begin a week of protest against a very ill advised management's $100 million savings plan, which calls for laying off adjuncts and reducing course offerings to students among many other damaging cuts. So this is the first of a week of activities. Um, why are we here? Well, adjuncts and faculty, full-time faculty and staff and their supporters are here gathered in uh, public spaces at John Jay no, College, not. at Lehman College and at City College and on Zoom and YouTube um, to dramatize our value and show all the work that we do for our students. So we're here grading papers and exams, we're preparing PowerPoints, we're writing lectures, we're recording videos, posting on Blackboard, answering student emails and writing letters of recommendations and more. So why is opposing, um, why is opposing layoffs and course reductions so important? Well, at John Jay alone, the budget reduction for next year is 1.6 million of the adjunct budget. This means between 150 and 200 course sections from John Jay's course offerings will be cut. Um, valued and experienced adjunct faculty will no longer be teaching these courses. Some of them will be laid off entirely and others will have their income slashed. Other colleges, have implemented similar cuts. Um, reduction, reducing course offerings is a poor strategy for boosting and maintaining enrollment. Fewer sections means larger classes for students and, and as they're funneled into the remaining courses, uh, losing valued adjunct faculty undermines continuity and deprive students of talented and experienced instructors. So what do we want? We want the management of CUNY to restore the canceled classes and sections to rehire the adjuncts that were laid off or lost courses they regularly taught. We want them to eliminate the vacancy review board, which limited um, full-time faculty hires and we want them to restore other cuts to the budgets for non-teaching adjuncts and college assistants. So welcome again to our protest against these devastating and poorly and poor advised cuts. Uh, back to you. Oh, no, um, next we're going to hear from our vice president of part-time personnel, from the PSC. The PSC is the professional, uh, the faculty and, and staff union for CUNY. And um, so let me turn it over to Lynn Turner. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well in all of our various campuses where we're doing this simultaneous action. And um, again, yes, I'm Lynn Turner. I'm the VP for part-time personnel. I also teach as an adjunct lecturer at LaGuardia Community College and have a graduate assistant D at the Graduate Center. Um, and as Holly said, um, that basically we are here to demonstrate our CUNY-wide resistance to the cuts that, are, that have been um, actually mandated the preemptive cuts that CUNY central administration have mandated upon campuses, which basically put not, not only the issue of students um, tuition, um, but also um, 
adjunct employment and our, you know, our work, which upholds the university, um, put a bullseye on, on, on our, our jobs and our work. And we have been across CUNY and across campuses pushing back against this. Here's some good news. Good news is that yesterday there was a, that, the, that finally there was a budget, state budget that was issued and that that state budget has a hundred million dollar increase in operating costs for CUNY. It also increases by, it has about a big, puts about a billion dollars in the capital budget. It, it is, it states that there will be ongoing, um, that there will be ongoing increase in funding for CUNY. A lot of this was because of the good work that we all have done in pressing for full funding for CUNY. And no, this does not represent enough funding, but it also speaks to Grace, the, you know, the, the, the illogic and the, the, the damage, the potential damage that was preemptively implemented by CUNY, demanded by CUNY administration. So now what can, the, what are we calling upon the chancellor and the board of trustees to do and, and administrations across campuses, we're calling for the rescinding of the cuts, right? Of these austerity cuts, let CUNY be the, you know, the, the people's university as it should be and as we are fighting for and, and, and also, and to have no layoffs, no job loss, to, um, to, to continue to do what's needed, no reduct, no, no, increase in workload, no larger class sizes, you know, none to not implement the measures that are going to be just so destructive to our university and to our students, as well as to us as, as faculty and staff at CUNY. And, and to come to the bargaining table with the PSC, we have, we are, we will be at the board of trustees taking that both of the, all of these demands to the board of trustees um, on Monday the 8th, right? And to start to negotiate because our PSC bargaining agenda includes a whole variety of things that are really crucial for, for part-time personnel from pay parity, um, which would all, you know, to expand to, to measures for job sec security, the expansion of multi-year appointments, for, for certificates of continuous employment, um, for multi-year appointments, for non-teaching adjuncts as well, um, for conversion lines, for, for, ad, you know, for those of, uh, adjuncts who have, are long serving within the university, as well as for as, as um, instructor lines for doctoral employees, for expanded benefits, and a lot of things that, and this is just about the part-timer part of it, and there's a, many you know, transformative bargain, um, components of the bargaining agenda. And what we need now is to, is to get down to work in negotiating a contract and preparing ourselves to organize to fight for one. So I hope to, glad to see you all here. And I hope to see you on Monday at the Board of Trustees, whether you are speaking, hopefully you've registered to speak or not, whether you are there to be part of the picket beforehand and the action within the meeting itself, as well as at the at City Hall on the 11th. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, um, and thank you for um, sharing. I think we're going to now hear from um, Marcy and the theater department at um, at John Jay. And then we're going to see a short video that was created by theater department um, students and adjunct. So um, Marcy, once you are uh, ready. I'm ready, sure. Thank you. Hello and thank you so much. Yeah, I am, I've been an adjunct at John Jay for seven years and an adjunct at CUNY for <laughs> years. So um, I've been teaching theater, uh, criminal justice in theater, intro theater, improvisation for theater. And we found out um, early in this semester that our department was being dissolved and disappeared and evaporated. So now there's many adjuncts, at least 10. I don't know how many full-timers who now will be unemployed. 
And um, even those which had who had three year appointments, those have been uh, fired also. So I just want to say, um, aside from my personal hardship of not having an income, um, I think that the biggest tragedy for the dissolving of the theater department at John Jay, which I heard was actually in the works for several years, is the loss to the students of extremely qualified professionals. I myself have an OB and two Fulbright Scholar residencies. And I know there are many other of my colleagues who have numerous awards in the professional theater department. What does that mean? That means we have contacts around the world in terms of internships and professional collaborations and academic associations. It means that students who are going into the legal profession, into law enforcement, into business, will now no longer have the benefit of courses like communication that will teach them about public speaking, about interpersonal dynamics, and about using the arts as an alternative for thinking about things. The thing about the arts, as you know, is it offers different perspectives. And especially the course Criminal Justice and Theater, students study the dramatization of criminal and legal issues from around the world in diverse populations. So if I was a student going into these departments, and I'll wrap it up, I would be really, I would really have a second thought about going to John Jay. Because one of the advantages of this school was a combination of forensics and political science and very practical courses, along with the requirement to take some kind of art or public speaking course. So I just think that eventually students will become disenchanted with the programming at John Jay. So for me, it feels like the department, the school is shooting themselves in the foot by getting rid of the theater department. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. And we're now going to uh, see a short video from uh, theater department at John Jay, unless there's somebody else who wanted to also speak about the theater. Uh, okay, so let's um, do this Go magic. The video. What? Go ahead with the video. Yeah, it's coming Afterward. up. Zabby will speak. It is coming up. Before I started doing this acting stuff, I was afraid to get up in front of people because I was scared of what they might think, especially if I screwed up. And how now? I don't care because it's not about that. But when I'm acting, I can say the things I'm afraid to say in real life because I won't get in trouble if, if I lose it or or cry or get mad or go off on somebody. Because when I show my emotions and stuff, when I get as real as I can get, people don't trash me. No, no, they clap and laugh and tell me I'm good at this stuff. And nobody ever told me I was good at nothing before. Not in real life. I mean, I don't even know what real life is sometimes. Everybody's trying to be who people expect them to be. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean anything. Always looking up in my head like I ain't even there? Well, you just know everything, don't you? You swore you would never throw that up in my face. You're too young to be getting serious. It was a stupid, stupid mistake. I just lost it because you didn't believe me. Fair? What do you know about fair? Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. There's nothing wrong with that. Master of my fate, captain of my soul. I want to be able to hold my head up. Uh, being the ball I never had. We've been tight for so long. I got you. I got you. You really don't know what to say. We were going to live forever. What am I doing with my life? All my life I wondered what this moment would be like. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean anything. <laughs> And do you want to know?
know something? It's not just noise in my head. It's all true. When it comes from in here, it's all true. That's why I wanted to do a scene. To act it out, to tell the truth. Even though it's scary. I mean, everybody is scared. But no one wants to say it. But up here, on this stage, we do say it. And we say it loud enough for everybody to hear. That we're in this together. That we're enough. That I'm enough. Just me. Just this. So that was uh, the, the student's final. Uh, the, uh, the play was directed and written by an adjunct. And what is happening at uh, John Jay, as we can probably all agree, is um, horrible. And hopefully something can still be done to save the theater department. Um, so, I have, um, I think we still have somebody at John Jay, but actually we're going to, um, we're going to, we have a speaker uh, who is about to enter the, who is about to enter the room right now, um, Karanja. So Karanja, you are, are you ready or do you need a little bit more time? Uh, I, I would love to get the two minutes, but okay, I that can... sounds great. We have somebody who's waiting who also wants to speak, so we can put you after. I just want to make sure we're okay. Great. Uh, Zabby is Zabby next? So, Holly, hi, I'm gonna change Holly's screen for just a second so I can say Zabby. I'm pretty sure you can hear me because I'm on my phone audio. Um, there we go. But Sorry, Sabi, I muted you because there's some echo happening. So can we try? I've now whatever? moved away from. Okay. I've now moved away from the. the Amazing. Team. You can see me. You can see me we in the back of the Zoom room if you want to, if you want to okay. capture the, if you can capture the, um, D board. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're using the best of John Jay's technology to um, capture the the room and outcome where you can see me. Um, it does say I'm. We don't need to unmute the the D10. Um, hi. So we as see. all adjuncts know. As all the adjuncts know, when one is teaching, one does not always have complete control of when one can leave the classroom. So I had on my schedule students sharing um, projects today, and that's why I couldn't get here at the dot of uh, 1.30. But I am happy to follow up without having the chance to hear what Marcy Allen said about the status of um, communication theater arts faculty at John Jay. There was a secret. There was a secret that um, some faculty knew, but it seems to be that the faculty who knew it were all full timers who gradually um, taught communications courses. And that meant that the chair sought out really talented, dedicated drama adjuncts to make it possible to make theater classes available at John Jay. So the video you saw, I hope you um, were impressed by it. I am in the many times I've seen it, showed how much our CUNY students generally, our John Jay students in particular, need and cherish the opportunity to express themselves. Um, there is a token gesture, yeah. Thank you, Marcy. That's exactly right. That um, the the fact is that nobody told any of the adjuncts that essentially 
the communications and theater arts department at John Jay was a dead end. And I think Marcy and I might be thinking especially about um, somebody who had a really promising offer somewhere else who said, no, I'm building something at John Jay. I'm going to stay at John Jay. And, you know, for those of us who are here, it's very inspiring to work with people who have chosen public service in one way or another, and especially in our times, knowing that this is a place that educates um, law enforcement people and don't we want them all to be in touch with the range of feelings and emotions that human beings um, are subject to? So I, once it came to my attention that theater arts were disappearing at John Jay, I was horrified at the concept. Um, and again, Marcy, feel free to add anything into the, the chat. I think that this wonderful device, the Zoom, board the d10 will share it with me what i what we have achieved through pressure on the administration and pushing in all the ways we we found um was getting a department to try to well they probably will succeed in restarting drama at john jay and we're excited about that but the problem is that it won't be continuous. That, um, yes, that the, the basic idea for all of us adjuncts who managed to teach at least two classes in the same department is that we are building toward the security of a three-year appointment. At John Jay, there were three people who already had earned a three-year appointment, and there were several who saw it within reach. Um, against the rules, a, somebody with authority told the director of the play that if he directed the play, it would accelerate his progress to a three-year appointment. Well, I've been in adjunct work for a while. I've never heard of anything, and there certainly is nothing in the contract about doing that. So that's a problem right there. But nevertheless, the fact that there will be no drama classes in the fall means that those faculty members who will be at the top of the list of the new theater minor will not have the opportunity to teach continuously. We're fighting this. We're fighting this in every way that we can. And I can't say enough about the contract enforcement department. We give them a lot of work, unfortunately. Um, because of shortcomings of treatments of adjuncts. But the main thing is theater is going to be saved here. We're confident that theater adjuncts will get rehired, but we don't get to guarantee it. The provost was essentially saying that yesterday, that nobody is guaranteed a job. We feel that it should be the case that theater is offered in the fall, that those adjuncts, even if the new minor doesn't exist, that those adjuncts should be able to teach. So that's where it stands. We are not able to pressure through union channels anymore. I would love it if we could see theater students stand up and say, we want to be able to take classes in the fall. That's where it stands. So I think Yasmina, um, I can say more, but I, the most important thing for me was that people got to see the demonstration of what students can achieve when they're supported and guided on a stage. Thank you. Um, and all the love and support to the theater department at John Jay and hopefully people um, can um, be employed, right? All of us. So um, I'm going to invite Karanja to talk to us um, now. I'm, I'm going to. I'm ready to go. Uh, okay, welcome, <laughs> welcome, you. welcome. Tell us I'm, where where are you from? I'm I'm running between a whole bunch of stuff, so I'm gonna keep this quick. I am a full time lecturer um, at Baruch College in um, Black and Latino Studies. I do not have CCE yet, but it's coming soon enough. Um, I was an 
adjunct at um, Baruch. I've been an adjunct at Hunter College. Uh, I was an adjunct years ago at BMCC. Um, and I know the struggles and realities of, of, of an adjunct needing to teach at multiple campuses in order to make, you know, ends meet. Um, luckily, in the midst of uh, COVID, um, I was offered a full-time um, position and I, um, I, I took it. So I'm, I'm lucky um, to, to, to have that experience to go from being an adjunct to being a full-timer. And I actually think that should be the, the reality for all of these positions that need to be opening up at um, CUNY that adjuncts should have first dibs because adjuncts are, they do the, the, the heavy lifting and they do not get compensated in, in the variety of ways that they need to be compensated, and not just in, 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 in your pockets, even though the pockets are extremely, um, extremely important. The reality of the situation <clears throat> is that, like, you know, we have a, a, a mayor who cares more about police, who cares more about um, policing the prison industrial complex and all that jazz than he does about education. And that's found with cuts that he's making to, you know, K through 12, cuts that he's making in CUNY, cuts that he's um, proposing to make in regards to libraries, so forth and so on. And I, I just think that at the very bottom, especially within the CUNY system, it's the adjuncts who are, you know, dealing with the 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 the, the cuts the most and, and, and it hurts adjuncts the most. But it also um, means that it's the responsibility of full-timers to support and push back and provide the necessary resistance um, when you know we, we were dealing with the, the, these cuts and attacks on um, CUNY and you know the cuts and attacks on adjuncts who are teaching within the the, the CUNY system. Um, the financial cuts hit um, our classes in in a variety of ways. It means that we have larger classes, and those larger classes mean that the student to professor ratio is 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 out of control. Um, you know. I teach a variety of classes, but within all my classes, especially the 1000 level classes, I um, do one-on-one -on -one sessions with my students throughout the semester. If I have a semester where there's 20 to 30 students in the class, yeah, we can do one-on-one -on -one sessions about your writing. But when you start making my classes 40 and 50 students, it's, it's hard. And again, adjuncts are the ones that are gonna be dealing with um, that, 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 heavy, that heavy lifting. Um, I'm going to stop there because I have a class to teach at 2.30 and a brother's tired. So um, thank you very much for allowing me to share just a, a few a few thoughts and ideas as it relates to um, the, the realities of teaching within CUNY, the realities of being an adjunct in CUNY, the realities of going from an adjunct to full-timer. And I hope that we have more adjuncts that can jump in and be full-timers. Thank you very much. Thank you, and um, thank you for standing in solidarity with us. Um, so I will um, now invite our next uh, speaker, and that is Boida. And Boida, I'm checking BMCC. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm trying to look at the who is from where, but you can all introduce yourselves. Yeah, no worries. Thank you so much, and great to follow Karanja here too. Um, so I'm a full timer in English at BMCC. I'm actually, I've been on parental leave this year. I have a very cute assistant <laughs> um, who's taking a nap in my lap. Um, so I just wanted to start by giving like a small anecdote um, that illustrates how adjunctification harms all of us, including full-timers um, in the institution. So when I gave birth at the end of last semester, I knew it was going to happen right around the final exam time, the last week of class. And I tried to hire an adjunct to cover my final exam grading um, because, you know, I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and I definitely wanted that adjunct to get paid. Um, well, unfortunately, because as I'm sure most people here know, adjuncts only get paid for basically the hours that they're actually in the classroom. It turned out that even though I had made an agreement with someone about this um, and had someone lined up, I couldn't actually do that and I couldn't hire an adjunct. Um, and so what happened because I, I gave birth like right after the last day of classes, um, I ended up grading my own final exams four days after like a really difficult birth. 
Um, you know, and I survived, but this is just like one illustration of how really the whole system is, is eroding. Um, the more we just allow adjuncts to only get paid. This is why such a pro the protest that you're doing, the grade in is so important because there's just so many hours unpaid outside of class um, that are invisible. And so we need to make these things visible as you're doing. Um, my partner is an adjunct, um, and while the fle flexibility does offer offer some benefits for childcare for us right now, it also makes it all pretty much impossible to plan. Um, at the beginning of this term, uh, my partner David's schedule changed entirely. He was planning to teach all online just two days a week, and then th that's very weak of the first day of classes. Um, he suddenly, those classes were canceled and he was given completely different classes, different class prep, different modalities. Suddenly they were all in person four days a week instead of two days a week and a completely different student body. They're high school students, not even college students. Um, so he had expected to be home for four days during the week and suddenly he was going in four days. Um, again, this turned out okay. We're lucky. I had paid parental leave, which I'm very grateful for, um, and we could be flexible. But imagine how this, how is this going to work in the future when we have to line up childcare and I'm back at work full time? Um, so just pivoting a little bit to John Jay, um, John Jay, and I wish I could be there with you all. John Jay is one of the principal colleges to which our BMCC undergrads transfer. Um, but we're living in a time when community college enrollment is taking a nosedive. Um, in particular, transfer rates are really dismal right now nationally. Uh, in, there was, in a recent study, one out of um, out of one million community college students who enroll who were enrolled in 2016, only one in seven earned a bachelor's degree in six years. So our students at BMCC are your future students, but our attrition rates are honestly dismal. Student advisement is abysmal and the transfer process is opaque. Adjunct professors, though many are dedicated and excellent teachers, are just simply pressed too thin, shuttling across multiple campuses, teaching six, seven classes sometimes, pressed too thin to offer students the support and advisement they would need um, for their own, the student success, and or to, and sometimes they don't have the time to adequate time to for course preparation um, and attention. So classes, not, not due to the fault of the adjuncts, but for structural reasons can be rushed or disorganized. Um, and although I found that students can be very sympathetic um, with the adjunct plate and express solidarity with their professors because CUNY students are fantastic, students should not have to worry about their professor's well-being or worry that they're bothering them when they contact them outside of class um, because they know how stressed, how pressed thin their schedules are. So because I'm a full-time prof, I've been able to in implement innovative pedagogy into my classroom. I've taken my students on class trips to museums and the theater. I have undertaken collaborative projects with other classes, even classes that are overseas. And I have done tons of mentoring outside of the class. And I know lots of adjuncts do this work as well. Um, but this is part of my job that I'm actually paid to do. Again, going back to the whole point of this grade in, this protest that makes, that renders really visible to the administration um, why, how much unpaid work adjuncts do. Um, and if adjuncts do do it, it's considered a labor of love. So I really, what I, my central point here is we should not rely on labors of love. Our labor must be paid and our labor must be visible, which is why protests such against devastating cuts like these are so important. Um, so thank you so much. That's actually all I had planned for today. Um, and I wish I could, solidarity with all of you. Thank you, Boida. Thank you so much. Um, and um, I, will now invite, um, uh, let me just see, sorry, Giacomo. Giacomo is next. Uh, Giacomo, just unmute yourself if you are. Okay, wonderful. Welcome. And uh, let us know which campus you're from. And um, yeah. So can you guys hear me? Yeah. Cool. Um, so I'm at the Graduate Center at, at Hunter College, but um, seeing as Nathan's here from the JC and has encyclopedic knowledge of the issues at the Graduate Center, I'll uh, 
talk more about Hunter, but also mention that like another part of my equation when it comes to working at CUNY is that I'm an international student. And I'm also an international worker by virtue of that. And that, that leaves me in a position of, of some fragility. Um, I actually last semester, due mostly to problems of my own, but after I sought um, employment off campus at NYU, due to some problems with paperwork, I had my visa cancelled and had to return back to Australia. And even though part of that was definitely my fault and that sort of thing, it left me in a very sort of fragile and vulnerable situation. Um, and that's just, I suppose, part of the question and the equation of being an adjunct is that I wasn't then sure if I was going to get another uh, appointment this semester at Hunter. I can't work at NYU anymore. Um, you know, there was also a question of whether or not I could get an appointment next semester. So I've periodically as a an international student and an international worker gone into debt to my own uh, girlfriend several times <laughs> and other friends as well. Um, and that's also to do with just the, the the dismal wages that are paid not only to adjuncts, but to graduate teaching fellows and graduate assistants at the GC. Um, so another sort of part of, of that piece is that um, I know lots of international students who have had to take out actual loans or family loans uh, in order to support themselves, partly because of uh, the low adjunct wages and partly because of uh, the difficulties with being a graduate assistant and stuff. And the way that this all connects, I suppose, to cuts and to um, financial questions is that when um, the budgetary documents were released this week, um, there was some fantastic news that, you know, tuition uh, hikes for in-state students were off the table. At least that's what it looks like for now. But that doesn't rule out tuition hikes for uh, out-of-state students. And so, I mean, we have to be vigilant about the fact that these the cuts that CUNY is looking to make could be passed on to international students and workers who are already among the most vulnerable people in the CUNY system. Um, so that's one thing that I think is really important to keep in mind. Um, as a teacher at Hunter, the effect of, of cuts, um, even though Hunter has the lowest threshold of cuts, I think, out of any of the CUNY campuses and is apparently reporting a 102% attendance, uh, uh, sorry, enrollment figure, um, it's a strange sort of statistic. Uh, there are still really material effects to cut. So I, I teach in the English department as as Nathan does as well. I adjunct um, and lecture in the English 220 course, which is a mandatory uh, writing intensive course. It's an introduction to writing about literature. And every student in the CUNY system, in the Hunter system has to take this course, um, or most of them at least. And it's all taught by adjuncts, these mandatory courses. Um, now, one thing that I want to sort of insist about this is this is one of the first interactions that Hunter students have with the college and uh, this and the English 120 course, and it really shapes sort of their relationship to the institution. The difficulty is that there's no real onboarding process or it's a very variable process. And I found out this semester from the, uh, from the lecturer that runs this program that um, they've cut pretty much all budget for onboarding. So students who are doing their first year of graduate teaching fellowships and also new adjuncts who have just started are getting no instruction when they start their courses, right? So they're, you know, thrown into the deep end with this sort of thing. Um, and so we get reports from students of uh, being uh, of a chaotic experience in these first two courses, um, people, students being unsure, you know, what uh, the relevance is to their degree path, um, people failing the course because they're not getting their own support and then having to retake these mandatory courses that really are to some extent relics of a, an earlier time in education um, at the university level. So, you know, that's a direct effect of, of cuts to staffing for faculty um, and for the sorts of onboarding processes that should be part and parcel of teaching at a university. But even beyond that, um, one of the major effects of cuts at the graduate, at, at, at Hunter, have been um, cuts both to what I suppose once was called remedial instruction and also to advisement and counselling. Um, so students in their first and second year very rarely know where their degree is headed at Hunter because they're not sure what 
what they're doing. They, they don't have access to this sort of comprehensive advisement and also the emotional counseling that I think is required, especially since COVID. One of the things that I had to research this semester as a writing across the curriculum fellow was the effects of COVID on um, our learning environment uh, since the pandemic. And though some people will argue that one of the main losses was academic, really what the evidence shows is that the main losses during COVID were um, effects to people's mental health. And so students were entering or are entering college now um, with inflated levels of uh, anxiety and depression. And the more that CUNY cuts uh, the budget for things like uh, counselling, remedial instruction and advisement, the worse those sort of uh, position, the, the worse those um, conditions become. And so I think a lot of people have noticed at Hunter the attrition rates of uh, attendance over the course of semester and people um, like gradually losing numbers as semester goes on and students not finishing courses, lots like an increasing rate of incompletes and things like that. And, you know, lots of this can be tied to the fact that the institutional supports that should be there, the resources that should be there for students to learn uh, and to function within the college setting are vanishing. Um, because it's a four-year campus, uh, Hunter students don't have uh, access to things like CUNY ASAP or um, some of the um, SEEK programs and stuff like that. And so you know, the, the assumption is that because they're at the four-year campus that they're somehow better off than the students at the two-year campus, but that's not, it's not simply not true. So we have students dropping out for financial reasons. I know one graduate student at Hunter who had to drop out because they had to work a 40 hour work week because they had no financial support um, at a warehouse. So they had to drop out of their, their graduate course. Um, the writing center has been radically defunded at graduates at Hunter to the point that, you know, we've only got two or three staff members working there to help out. Um, Kinney is supposedly transitioning from remedial instruction to co-requisite courses, but it's opaque as to how that actually operates at a practical level at Hunter um, and how those supports are actually laid out for students. So for me, like the main issue with cuts that I've seen, apart from the apart from adjunctification um, and the fact that the course that I teach is taught entirely by adjuncts um, and that I know lots of people who aren't getting reappointed uh, as adjuncts next semester, is the effect that it has on, on students and the effect that uh, these lack of services have on completion rates, um, on quality of education, on uh, desirability of even coming into campus in the first place, and of the sorts of educational and learning outcomes that they're supposed to gain from these courses. So, yeah, those are the pieces that I think are sort of the most important to keep in mind when thinking about Hunter. Thanks for having me. This is, I'm also really chuffed that you guys are doing this. And I think that, you know, the model of the CCNY grade in was really inspiring too. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much and uh, great, great information and sharing. And uh, we're, I think we're now to hear from Lehman um, and actually Lehman is in person. So we're going to hear from Lehman. Um, I just want to check if. Uh, yeah, here. yeah, Lehman, here, do you I'll want me to share down. your slides? Do you want me to share your slides or are you sharing or do you want me to share something um, or you want to talk? I'm going to let other people. I'm going to let other people talk first uh, right. because I'm still having trouble getting my slides going. But we want to show a slide. I, can, I, I have your our, slides, um, Ruth. Uh, if, if you want our, me to uh, share, uh, I have your May Day March. Great, I have uh, your slides. Let me Ruth. just point the camera around so you can kind of see what we got here. Got Mark. We've got a little backlighting. We've got, these are all posters, which you'll see in the slideshow. Uh, we got Probably Renee. Sure. We got Renee. We got Stuart. Come on over here, Stuart, and uh, say a few words. Anybody wants to say a few words? There's Steve, there's Deirdre, and a few other people may be coming by later. And we got hey. some people on Zoom, I think. So go ahead, uh, Stuart. And uh, Maybe you'll come back for the slideshow after I, the next. Yeah. So Ruth, I do have Good your slideshow. Everyone. I'll keep it brief because we're grading. Uh, we're tired of racist austerity. We're tired of being cut to the bone. I've been here for 25 years. This is my anniversary year. 
And it is worse now than I've seen it in 25 years. We don't have enough staff, don't have enough faculty. Our students are reeling from twin pandemics of racism and COVID. Um, I, I wear the mask everywhere to keep me and everybody else safe, but mask mandates are gone. We're not testing. We've eliminated almost all COVID protections and we have this new variant that's coming up. So uh, we have uh, uh, our retirees have been forced into privatized healthcare. Uh, we're at 8% inflation. We have a mayor who keeps hiring cops and funding prisons and defunding CUNY, defunding public schools, defunding libraries. Um, we had a, a black man murdered by a white Marine in the last 24 hours in the city. Uh, we're at a crisis level of racism, a crisis level of classism. Queer and trans folks like myself are being attacked all over this country. We need fight back. We need a union that is willing to stand up and fight for inflation beating raises for the most vulnerable. The dangers are uh, adjuncts being cut. Uh, we don't need 6% cuts. We need 6% raises. I'll leave it at that. Solidarity, colleagues. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Stuart. So um, we turned out to be in a kind of a noisy place here. Uh, somebody just texted me that they've got our slideshow. Uh, I have your, I believe, you Ruth, I, yeah, Otherwise I could, you have let to come me know. back to us because I'm still having a little trouble. No, let me know uh, if this is what you want me to like share. Ryan? Look, right. is it? It's coming now. Perfect. Uh, do you want to talk or should I just show? Just show? So this was an action on May 1st. For... Yes, yeah, so we, we had an art build. Uh, these are students. The one on the left is the liaison for CUNY uh, Rising. We had students. Uh, then we had a speak out. People talked about, you know, Lehman and uh, uni and their, you know, everything. So here's the speak out still going on. And they, they headed out over out of, on campus. And um, some people joined as uh, as the march went along. And uh, this is some, this is the way into, I think, yes, there's the studio theater where um, Executive Vice Chancellor Pencil is us taking questions. And we had some chanting outside there. Can you, this is an actual video. You could hear the chanting. Oh, oh, Then uh, folks went outside to walked up uh, Bedford Avenue uh, toward the subway, past a food cart, crossed the crossed the highway, got all the way to the uh, subway. That's right by the subway. Well, Turned around. <laughs> no, we, the the bridge goes over the the highway, right? Oh, uh, it goes over the train. Oh, the train track. Sorry about that. And came back, and uh, I have to say, I had just I was staying with the food and the posters, and they came back with such grins on their faces, and people that had and additional people who had joined along the way. So it was a it was great first annual May Day March at Lehman, and it was very nice that uh, all the people going in and out of the Pencil Town Hall saw a different point of view. Let's let's put it like that. And um, we chanted yes. every minute. I think, the they, yeah, they did. Around. They chanted the whole chants. time, 50 and different chants. chants. Thank you. Uh, adios. <laughs> we're, we're... Oh, did you, you muted yourself? Or is. You know what? Uh, Renee has something to say. Yeah. Um, I just want to add, um, I guess, from my perspective, teaching mathematics as a mathematician that, um, you know, there are all these like trending, you know, very like sexy, for lack of a better word, pedagogical techniques that everyone wants to implement, like active learning and all this other stuff. 
um, that administrations love to tout their schools for doing um, at the same time as they love to like tout small class sizes, which are necessary for these techniques. So none of these, these all go hand in hand with smaller class sizes and adequate funding for instructors. There's no better pedagogy than uh, instructors who have decent living conditions, decent working conditions, so good uh, learning conditions for students and reasonably small class sizes. Another uh, pedagogical like technique that I've learned um, from working in Europe and from friends who work in Europe and just in my experience in mathematics in general is that it is necessary a lot of the time to retake classes. People do it all the time. When I was a graduate student, the core classes, everyone retook them. They took them two or three times. And I have students who have been able to retake like calculus, for example, who do much better the second time because you need to, you need to relearn the material. Like Nabokov said, you can't read a novel, you can only reread it. And it, it's 10 times that for mathematics, even as great mathematicians have said. And you can't retake courses if you're on a tight time constraint which you necessarily are if you have to pay tuition, if you have to pay any tuition at all. A friend of mine who was teaching in Germany is like, oh, their system is so good. They just have one exam at the end and they just retake the whole class if they don't pass the exam. And then they, they eventually learn it, which is fine because there they don't have to pay tuition. Our students have to pay tuition. Uh, our administration and presidents, stuff like that, love to you know glamorize like STEM and all of these job opportunities that students will have, but they are locked out of those when you know circumstances force them to like fail classes, which should not be high stakes, but it is because of all of these things. Similarly, for all of these like career opportunities or whatever, like if I want to pass on information to my students, if I want to write letters of recommendation, if I want to talk to them one on one about career options, I cannot do that with a large class size. So. Everything that the administration purports to value is directly at odds with budget cuts, with tuition hikes. Obviously, these things have an extremely racist effect. If you look at, you know, how Lehman, which has a particular demographic, was threatened with a higher end of cuts than a lot of um, other colleges were. And so, you know, this is just, you know, clearly any attempts to appeal to like the values, the stated values or morality of the administration is, I think, kind of a lost cause. And we really need to get organized because we run the university and we have to really take control of it ourselves. So anybody else here want to say what they're grading? What are you grading, Deirdre? Hey, guys, I'm grading. Um, topics in the novel. The <laughs> students have choices. They can write analytical papers. In this case, they're doing literary criticism and theory through poetry. Um, so they're writing about some of the novels that we've read. It's um, it's fun for them, but they, they come away with amazing learning experiences. And again, this is stuff we have to do. It takes a lot, a lot of time, as those of you who design assignments know. So our students are learning through different ways to learn, but it takes small class sizes. It takes a lot of work from them and a lot of work from us. Um, I'm standing next to the farmer's fridge, which probably has like an $8 salad in it, um, in a can. These kids are hungry. They're hungry. I bring food to my office. They come and sit, they have soda, they have a seltzer, not soda. Um, we talked about today's, um, yesterday's Senate, about how we're trying to increase, increase food for students on campus to, you know, replenish our student life pantries and things. I don't need to hold that up. But um, <laughs> all of these things, you know, the students cheered today when they found that they're not getting a tuition hike. I've been here for 20 years. Stuart, you've been here forever too. It's more than doubled in the time that we've been here, the tuition. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's they're still getting the same big jobs. Yeah, yeah. And they're still getting the same us that are still doing everything. Security, housing, security, mm -hmm. all all but the wealthiest. And so I'm also the mother of um, two Lehman grads oh, sorry. and one current Lehman <laughs> student. She's probably a very many parts. I believe in publication uh, education for yes. not just what I do, but for my family yes. and for my sons. And they had different options and opportunities that they looked into and they wanted to come to CUNY. They wanted to come here. Um, and they're thriving academically and intellectually because they're meeting with their professors, they're seeing us. And every time CUNY pulls something back, we lose that contact, that human contact that makes our students 
want to learn, come back and see us, come back and come take our classes more than once. Not that great. Like they just want to be with, with us. And so we have to, we, have, we don't have to just keep funding, we have to increase funding. And sitting here in Schuster, I'm a little afraid of all the time. Um, it's got to come down. It can't just be upstairs. That funding needs to be down around. <laughs> yeah, you get my metaphor. <laughs> Speaking in English code. So, you know, much solidarity and appreciation. We read the 10 point plan this morning in um, the novel as we were finishing Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. And not a single student in the, in the class had ever read the 10 point plan. Read housing, education, fairness, justice for people in of, of against discrimination, against racial discrimination, against gender discrimination. Um, you know, Huey and, and Bobby said that in what, 1966, the year I was born? Still the same world. So thanks, Ruth, for letting me talk. Thank thanks, folks. Deirdre. Steve. Uh, nice. Great. Thank you. We got um, another one. Now everybody's okay. inspired. Hi, everybody. So that I'm, is great. Uh, right now, grading an exceptional paper by one of my Comp 2 students who. You know, I think as someone just like her peers whom we should be investing more in, not less, um, I think she's doing very much with very little investment, which is, you know, a testament to her capability, um, but it shouldn't be that way. I'm a fourth generation Bronxite. I'm a graduate of Newman College, and uh, I also have another degree from City College. So, you know, CUNY is, uh, you know, near and dear to my heart, and so are the kids and their futures, and I just... You know, it upsets me that we're, you know, taking money away from them, uh, you know, to pay Paul, so to speak. Uh, and um, it shouldn't be that way. We're investing way too much in things we shouldn't and not enough in the things that we should. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Lehman. Um, amazing to hear from you. So we're going to... Uh, if you're okay, we can come back to Lehman um, in a bit, but we're going to now go and hear from Nathan, who I believe is at the GC. So Nathan, you're on. Hi, everyone. Uh, really nice to be here. Yeah, I'm Nathan I'm at the Graduate Center. I'm coming to you from our union office or union closet because uh, we don't have like any space for meetings. So when the union office is empty, I hop in here and take a nap or go on a Zoom call or something like that. Um, sorry, also the lighting and my camera is really bad. So if I look like Brando in Apocalypse Now, I, I apologize. Um, I want to, before I forget, um, I'm going to put, this is our GC Union website. Uh, we try to keep it up to date with posts of stuff going on at CUNY. Obviously, it's Graduate Center focused, but we really try to include stuff from all over CUNY and labor stuff going on in New York City as well. Uh, there's also a big events calendar. Um, Wednesdays, we've been having community events at the Graduate Center. Anyone in New York City is welcome to come. Absolutely, everyone at CUNY is welcome to come. There's food and events, you can check those out. Uh, also sometime this weekend, we'll probably be posting a big report about all the May Day stuff that's gone on. And uh, Ruth's slideshow reminded me. So we'll have pictures from things that were going on at Lehman, at Kingsborough Community College, at Hunter, at uh, an action that happened down at Battery Park against Adams's budget cuts to New York City's public education system. So just wanted to share that. Um, I could talk, I could tell you about a few things that are going on at the GC. Uh, we had a labor management meeting where we talked about budget cuts a little bit. Of course, the president, Robin Gorell, sort of evaded everything that she could. Uh, but it was implied that a lot of the funding, so our, our graduate student funding packages are normally five years, and Garel said that those will not be touched, but it was heavily implied that the post-fellowship, so the, the sixth-year funding or seventh-year funding, which often comes in the form of a one-year teaching assistantship that a lot of people rely on because very few folks finish their degrees in five years, it was heavily implied that those might be uh, disappearing uh, or at least become much harder to obtain. So that's one thing that budget cuts will affect. Um, also facilities. So they're gonna pull a lot of money from our already 
falling apart and crumbling infrastructure. Like, you know, we don't have a functioning kitchen at the Graduate Center, which is a lot of what the Reclaim the Commons stuff has been about. Um, so uh, facilities will get hit. Looks like uh, $100,000 is being pulled from the library budget. Um, and those are just a few things. But, you know, to me, what's more demoralizing than the budget cuts is sort of the lack of coordinated and organized response that we have as a community. I mean, austerity at CUNY is nothing new. Uh, you know, the, the government has been divesting in public education throughout the country and, and CUNY for the past 30, 40 plus years. Um, and so more than this particular round of budget cuts, uh, of course we should focus on that. And I think it's to the PSC's credit of those who have worked in the leadership and have been like fighting with this lobbying and anti-budget cut, um, you know, organizing uh i think that work is very important and probably things are not as bad as they could have been because of it but i think if we want to see the kind of public funding of cuny that would make this the university that we all need and deserve of you know 15 student class sizes of living wages for every single person uh, every single employee at this university i think that's going to take a massive grassroots organizing and mobilization campaign because you know that's where we have power where 300,000 350,000 when you count the students and employees at this university we we don't have the money to fight the billionaire class in the legislature <laughs> we don't we don't have the chips you know to to buy in at at that table um, but I, where we have power, and I think we've done a really good job showing that at the Graduate Center during the Reclaiming the Common stuff this semester, even just a little bit, um, and even to a certain extent, the things that we managed to organize for May Day, um, in that, and that's with a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the people at this university. Uh, and so if we were able to come together and really organize on the ground, I think we could win a real transformation of this university as we've seen in the past, as we've seen when students organized in, you know, in the late 60s. Um, and so I'll just end by saying that I think what that means is organizing towards a joint student teacher strike throughout the CUNY system. Um, I think that should be our strategy. What, uh, you know, when we get there or if we get there or whatever um, are, are different questions. And there's lots of conversations to have around the way, along the way. But um, I think that is how organizing towards that is how we will build the power to win the things that we need at CUNY. All right, that's all. Thank you, Nathan. Um, and thank you for all the information you shared with us. So we're now going to jump and switch uh, to, and by the way, I really appreciate the background, Nathan. I love the, the images. So we're going to switch to, we're at City College and uh, we have Robert here with us live, who is going to say a few words. So um, let me just uh, do this. Robert is, don't get confused. Robert is on Marwa's computer. They did not merge. <laughs> they are two people. <laughs> Hello, Robert. Hey, everyone. How are you? Thank you all for having me uh, speak. Um, I don't think I have too much that we don't already know to say or share. Um, I just wanted to say a few words about just the situation in general and, you know, the um, absurdity of these proposed cuts coupled with the uh, utter unsurprisingness of them. Right. We uh, if you've been a CUNY for any amount of time, we know that they're always uh, seem to be trying to, to um, destroy the institution uh, through budget cuts. Um, I think one thing that we can take from this is that it's been inspiring to see people mobilizing uh, in response to these cuts. 
um, and that that's just what we have to keep doing. Um, and to not only just uh, mobilize to defend ourselves, but then to go on the offensive, right? So that we can actually uh, win a funded institution and um, you know our students can get the education that they all deserve. Um, you know, uh, when Yasmina sent out uh, the information about uh, this event, um, you know, they said uh, Vice Chancellor Batista has put a target on, on the backs of adjuncts by saying, um, cut the adjunct budget. That's how you're going to save money. Well, first of all, it makes it sound like Batista doesn't know how CUNY works because who's going to teach these classes, right? More than half of classes at CUNY are taught by adjuncts. So who's going to teach those classes? Um, if, if you are going to try to, quote, save money, uh, by cutting the adjunct budget, you're just going to have larger classes. So the adjuncts who are here are going to have to have more students. Our full-time colleagues are going to have to have more students. And our students are going to suffer. Um, so again, it's unsurprising, completely absurd. And we just need to stay in the fight and keep organizing. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and let me remove. <laughs> so. Thank you, Robert, and wonderful to see you here with us. Um, I'm just going to do also a little bit. Oh, let me get off. I don't know if Pam wants to say hello. <laughs> um, no, they can't hear you, but I can. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. So we're here at this great end, and I can't say anything more than Robert's just said, because we have a target on our back. But it's not just a target, it's also the place where they're going to save money by raising class sizes. So I just want to tell everyone to make sure you check your class sizes this semester that you've been assigned because people have been coming back to us and saying, hey, I have more students than I had last semester. So um, it would be great if everybody could check that. Um, and I just want to say thank you all for being here because, you know, it's just really this is really important that we pull together and make sure that we're um, that we're seen, right? That's the most important thing we can do is um, we uh, to be seen. So, you know, um, thank you very much, and um, I'll see you all soon in some meeting or another. Oh, May twelfth, unemployment meeting. Pass it on. You'll get a note tomorrow probably about it. Okay. Bye. Quickly turn around. This was um, this was Pam, who is uh, the person who pulled me into organizing. So, um, okay. So, and yeah, we hear Pam basically got probably most of us at the most of us adjuncts at um, at the city have been <laughs> pulled by Pam. So um, I am going to now invite uh, Noe. Noe is the next one to uh, come on. So Noe, unmute yourself and then I will spotlight. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, mute my own speaker just so I have less, uh, how should I say, um, echo. So hold, let me, all right, so I can hear myself from other people, but anyway, yes, I'm in the Department of Art and Music at John Jay. Um, I have been, teaching there since uh, 2009. I'm a late return to academia after having survived the World Trade Center and uh, pushed through PTSD to go back to graduate school in my late 40s. And um, so I've been lucky so far. I've been teaching th the same three classes pretty much throughout. However, what I'm seeing over this time hundred is faculty attrition. We've looked as various full time faculty have retired, they have not replaced the lines. They just put in other adjuncts, and we have lost valuable expertise. Um, and uh, in addition, recently we've been having attrition of class sections, just how many of a given class are taught as a result, students have fewer options. Now, as we all know from teaching at CUNY, there is a large component of the student body that is at risk. Now, this is due to a number of factors. Many are first generation college goers, so they don't have the family support and referent 
as it were. Many students are coming from lower income brackets. As a result, there are physical and mental health challenges that are besieging so many of them. Homelessness among students. And we faculty, full-time and adjuncts, if we are doing our job correctly, if we are connecting with students, we end up being the first line of emotional support to stop them from burning out, from disappearing, and from basically committing academic suicide. We're the ones who say we care and that you are important and no, you're not a failure because you are under siege from all the factors ongoing and in addition to the pandemic. We are, in effect, the first line of emotional support and we are informal social workers and counselors. And for this profound involvement, we are paid nothing. Students will note it. They'll note when we are caring and when we help them from drowning. But as far as the board of trustees, the governor, and so forth, they are just throwing the students to the wolves and they are basically causing the further implosion of CUNY. It will be self-fulfilling prophecy as you'll get less and less enrollment because people cannot sustain it. End of rant. Thank you, Noe. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I think our last scheduled speaker is from um, from the Grad Center. So, and is actually a dear colleague. And I will invite now Prabhashika to speak up. Am I audible? I I'm will sorry to highlight that... you. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, perfect. Um, I'm sorry, this is a bit wobbly because I'm um, online from my um, uh, iPad, but um, I just quickly wanted to speak about um, the uh, importance of, um, you know, uh, coming out together in large numbers and sort of organize, uh, you know, having an organized um, movement about, um, uh, you know, related to uh, raises and related to um, adjunct contracts. Um, I think one of the uh, big successes, um, and, and, uh, uh, and this is also a very good example for us uh, uh, in the recent times about um, adjunct contracts and, you know, grad students contract. I, think the, I mean, the grad student uh, assistant B, which uh, is a part of um, uh, the Graduate Center Fellowship, uh, is uh, a similar contract to what the adjuncts are offered. And so um, uh, it's, I, I mean, I'm going to use them interchangeably. Is that I, I think one of the important um, victories that we have had recently um, is at Columbia, where, uh, uh, you know, for several months, this, uh, the grad students and the adjuncts and the, all, all of the staff, they sort of came out all together and, um, uh, you know, got a, a sev I mean, got several notches of revision of their contracts, and um, I think um, uh, you know what they have now. Maybe not ideal, but a lot more reasonable than what they had before. And I think one of the important parts of our contract is not is that it is not in inflation indexed. Um, yes, um, and I think one of the important parts is that it's not inflation index and staying in New York City where the inflation is, you know, one of the big deals, um, uh, the rental prices and everything, um, uh, you know, starting from the rental prices to everything, including, of course, food and uh, uh, accommodation and board and everything. Um, they're not inflation indexed and um, uh, the indexing of course, we are paid peanuts for uh, our, uh, you know, uh, efforts and uh, for uh, for the amount of uh, work that we do. But um, the importance of inflation indexing comes from the fact that um, even that amount becomes, uh, I mean, it sort of loses its value because of the rising costs um, in all fronts. And I. I think therefore it's important that, um, oh yes, Radgats too. Yeah, um, uh, and, and therefore I think it's important for us to all come together and um, a sort of um, 
uh, move for a contract that is reasonable, uh, uh, that is, of course, reasonable, uh, you know, like Colombia did, but also sort of uh, index them in a way so that we don't have to, um, you know, have this movement over and over again, but instead sort of have contracts that are more ful fulfilling in a way that uh, in the future it is indexed in a way that it's continuously sort of, um, uh, you know, continues to remain reasonable, continues to remain fair. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you, Yasmina, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prabhashika. And what an amazing uh, speech for the, as our last one. I don't know if anybody here uh, who was not on, I guess, signed up in advance wants to say something. Um, I know I wanted to share a little bit on why. Why are we doing this? Uh, so I will share that and I will say if anybody else. Oh, I see Laura. Laura, did you want to speak? Uh, or sorry, I'm just checking in if I missed anybody. Okay. So I want to share a little bit of uh, what we are, what, why, why are we doing this? So I will, uh, let me screen share. I'm going to share. Here we go. So why are we doing this? Uh, why are we holding the grade in? And I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, so today... Today begins the week of protest against management's $100 million saving plan, uh, which calls for laying off adjuncts and other staff and reducing course offerings to students all across CUNY, as well as other damaging cuts. Adjunct faculty, along with full-time faculty, staff, students, supporters, are gathering in public spaces at John J. Lehman College, City College, and on Zoom, YouTube, hi, if anybody's watching us on YouTube, to dramatize our value and make the work we do for our students visible. We are grading papers and exams, preparing PowerPoints, writing lectures, recording videos, posting on blackboard, answering student emails, writing letters of recommendation, and more. Why? At John Jay alone, next year's budget reduces the funds for adjunct faculty by 1.6 million. 150 to 200 sections are being cut we're reducing course offerings, and this is a core strategy for boosting and maintaining enrollment. And we know that CUNY says that what they want to have is better enrollment and keeping people here, graduating students, having them finish their education, yet they are cutting the ways that these students are being supported. So uh, our students deserve smaller, not larger classes. They deserve our time and attention. So what do we want? We want our classes restored. We want rehiring of adjuncts that were laid off. We want to eliminate the vacancy re review board. We want to restore other cuts to the budgets for non-teaching adjuncts and college students. So what we want to do is not only save our jobs, we want to be here to fully support our students. And we cannot support our students if we're constantly threatened with our jobs being cut. Because in order for us to be supportive, in order for us to be here for students who need us, and we know they need us, we need to feel secure. You know, you have to feel safe in order to offer safety. So we're here standing together on, in different places, online, offline, and we're asking CUNY to support us. And we're asking CUNY administrators to stand with us in solidarity, to stand with us in support and not to fight their own labor force. So CUNY administrators need to hear us and they need to work with us and they need to together tell the state that we deserve to be supported and funded. And I wanna thank you all for here. This, um, if anybody else wants to share a few words, please do. Um, we still have a few minutes that we can stay on Zoom and online, but we also um, can just stay and great together. So thank you all for participating. And again, I see some announcements. There is a BOT hearing. Monday, May 8th, uh, you, there will be a protest organized outside at uh, La Guardia. You can come and participate. Um, even if you're not speaking at the BOT hearing, you can still come and join uh, the public solidarity. Uh, there is a 
PSC at City Hall. Oh, sorry. I just want to say it's 3.30, the BOT hearing. There is um, there is a City Hall protest on May 11th, encouraging our city representatives to fund us. So there are many different ways to support. There's many different ways to be engaged. And the only way that we're going to get heard is if we are speaking and being loud. So everybody <laughs> join up and speak up. Um, yeah. So thank you all. Um, I will, uh, maybe we can, do people at John Jay want to have us as the leading campus say anything? Hi, Yasmina. Um, thank you for your wrap up. I think that, oh, Lynn is clapping, maybe not saying she wants to go on. This is Zabby standing in front of our big screen again. We've had a little sustenance and we've been doing some grading. Um, I can't thank you enough for your role as a master of ceremonies. You've really shown it how, it, how it's done. Um, I, and I couldn't agree more with what you're saying. The only way we're going to get what we need is if we um, speak up loudly, even if I tell the screen to stay muted. So um, I heard once before that I was a little hard to hear. I'll try better. Um, my, the one question I had is as we're finishing up with our grading and connecting with one another, that is a, such a tool in our solidarity and our standing strong so that we can strike. Um, I was just hoping that you could give us as we go out um, that video I gave a link to of last December. There is a collection Ken, who's right here, is in it, of everybody who is wearing red for Ed. But maybe Lynn is wanting to say something. Oh, okay. Yes, no, I did. Yeah. Um, so that's another idea. But it's great that we're together. I care about all of these people. But also, I care about the people that we will meet and bring in the fold. It's exciting to know that, Justina, you were brought in by Pam, the right? And so... We, we stand on the shoulders of those who brought us in as Holly brought me in, and it's time to help others realize how central to our identity and our success is bringing others in. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, I will certainly play the video again at the end, uh, but I do, Lynn, did you wanna say something? Um, okay, I think, yeah, go I mean, ahead. I, I spoke earlier I, um, after Holly opened uh, the, the, the Zoom portion of the gradient up, so I don't have a lot more to add, but I think that this is like tremendous that we are here throughout the various campuses and that we're through this grade in, we are making real and visible the work that we do, right? The value that we provide to our students, to the university, right? To our, our union, our, our union siblings across titles. And this is the beginning. And let's let us keep fighting to make sure that, you know, we, we press for CUNY to be to serve the fulfill the transformative mission that it has to serve and to push back against these totally misguided and wrong-minded austerity cuts and onward, onward to the Board of Trustees, onward to next week's rallies, onward to our next actions together and um, solidarity, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna remove the spotlight. I'm gonna say if everybody, um, you know, we can see everybody who's still around, you can uh, wave at each other <laughs> or just send support as I see um, calls for unity in the chat, um, adjects of unity unite. I agree, Prabhashika. It's like, we all have to unite to work together for, um, for ourselves to be heard and for our students who depend on us. So um, that said, I will to end show one more time that wonderful, wonderful theater department video that we have seen. I hope to see you around. I hope to see you at other actions. And um, if you see me, just say hi. So 
Um, and if anybody here is around City College, find me, talk to me, and I will, um, yeah, I will love to hear from you. So thank you all. Uh, this is goodbye for me. And I will wrap us up by seeing that theater video one more time. Before I started doing this acting stuff, I was afraid to get up in front of people because I was scared of what they might think, especially if I screwed up. And how now? I don't care because it's not about that. And when I'm acting, I can say the things I'm afraid to say in real life because I won't get in trouble if, if I lose it or, or cry or get mad or go off on somebody because when I show my emotions and stuff, when I get as real as I can get, people don't trash me. No, no, they clap and laugh and tell me I'm good at this stuff. And nobody ever told me I was good at nothing before. Not in real life. I mean, I don't even know what real life is sometimes. Everybody's trying to be who people expect them to be. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean anything. Always looking over my head like I ain't even there? Well, you just know everything, don't you? You swore you would never throw that up in my face. You're too young to be getting serious. It was a stupid, stupid mistake. I just lost it because you didn't believe me. Fair? What do you know about fair? Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. There's nothing wrong with that. Master of my faith, captain of my soul. I want to be able to hold my head up. Now, being the father I never had, we've been tight for so long. I got you. I got you. I really don't know what to say. You are going to live forever. What am I doing with my life? All my life, I wondered what this moment would be like. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Do you want to know something? It's not just noise in my head. It's all true. When it comes from in here, it's all true. That's why I wanted to do a scene, to act it out, to tell the truth, even though it's scary. I mean, everybody is scared, but no one wants to say it. But up here, on this stage, we do say it. And we say it loud enough for everybody to hear that we're in this together, that we're enough, that I'm enough, just me, just this. So thank you, everybody.